we last left off, we were talking about the Episcopal Church, and we were just going to continue. thought I had more time. We had to stop. Reconciliation of the penitent. The confession of one's sins to God in the presence of a priest and the receiving of the assurance of God's forgiveness and the grace of absolution. That's a bunch of crock according to the Bible. But that is, you go to a man, a human man, and you tell him your sins, and by God, he can forgive you and wash you of your sins. That's a complete, utter lie from Satan, because Jesus Christ alone can wash away our sins. The book of Hebrews. Lay persons, Nicolaitans, the lay person, Nicolaitan, represent Christ in his church and bear witness to him wherever they may be according to the gifts given them. So does the Episcopal Church baptize infants? Yes. We believe that the grace conferred by the sacrament of baptism, there's another religious word, is not and should not be reserved only for informed believers. And then we got a church that baptizes infants, which is nowhere in the scriptures. The Catholic Church baptizes infants, which is nowhere in the scriptures. According to the world, Christmas is all about Jesus, which is not, and is not about today. With that, he is an Episcopal, a religion that takes the story of the night before Christmas and removes Christ out of Santa Claus. Now, what we're talking about is of the Episcopal uh, guy here, Clement Clark Moore, a visit from St. Nicholas, or twas the night before Christmas. Here's a guy in a hierarchy of this church. And we read that every Christmas service, they break out their was the night before Christmas and read it during the service of the Episcopal Church. Not the Bible. They break out a story that divides from the Catholic Church. I will not quote the birth of Jesus Christ, but it is not the pagan Christmas of December 25th. If Christmas is known for Jesus, Mr. Moore ruined it. The poem, arguably the best known verses ever written by an American, there's another foundation. Anything that evolves America and religion, American Standard Bible, the Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, look at all the cults, look at all the, the religious works that come out of America. America is not the foundation of a, religion, of a relationship to God. Was published incognito in Troy, New York. There's that other one we have to look out for. Santa Claus has roots. And those roots are in Catholic, priests, New York, tradition, images, and we'll soon get to Coca-Cola. Was uh, Troy, New York, Central on December 23rd, 1823. Having been sent there by a friend of Moore, it was reproduced repeatedly afterward. The poem was first credited credited in print to Moore in 1837. Moore himself reorganized the authorship when he included it in an 1844 collection of his works, poems, at the, at the preistence of his children, for whom he had originally written the piece. He wrote, this, he wrote Twas the Night Before Christmas for his children? Coming from a religion of a church that denied Jesus Christ and tells your children to wait for Santa Claus? And he was not de -churched? And this church today has women preachers and is now allowing sodomites? 
What you writing for your children for? To prevent them? To prevent them from Jesus Christ? Or to pervert them from Jesus Christ? Prior to the poem, Americans' idea about St. Nicholas and other Christmas tide visitors diverse broadly. The poem has influenced concepts about St. Nicholas and Santa Claus beyond the United States to the rest of English speaking world and beyond. So Santa Claus has taken a root as the same root of Jesus Christ. The Bible is to go all around the world, Jerusalem, Samaria, and outer parts of the world. Santa has now traveled around the world. He later gave 66 tracts of land, his apple orchard, to the Episcopal Diocese of New York to be the site of the General Theology Seminary. You're going to go to a place and learn about the Bible where they disregard the Bible and worship imaginary figures? Moore had written a Hebrew lexicon and was made professor the Bible excuse me he was made professor the biblical learning at the seminary this liar was made a teacher of this school he told his kids a lie about a man named Santa so you move him into the classroom as an instructor at a post that he held until 1850. American professor of Oriental and Greek literature as well as divinity and biblical learning. Biblical. Santa Claus is not biblical. At the General Theology Seminary of the Protestant Episcopal Church. The theological story at the theological story after the story about a Roman Catholic Church dead saint and the character of what Santa Claus has been in his study wrote a Hebrew lexicon. A lexicon is a word book or dictionary especially of Greek, Latin, or Hebrew and he knew the words that were found in that lexicon about images, pictures, idols that were found in the Bible and he still went forward about Santa Claus. Brother Moore, I don't even call you brother, I don't even you know, Mr. Moore, you are a hypocrite. When you write a book that has images, pictures, idols that are found in the Bible and you produce an image of a non-man with a feminine title. Oh, oh, there's your church. All right, let's keep going. Germanic, English, Old English, celebrated midwinter, Yule. Yule. Y-U-L-E. Numerous traditions <laughs> were absorbed by the Yuletide in a contemporary Christmas. So they brought the Yule into Christmas. Wild hunt, ghostly pageant in the time which Odin proven to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring a pageant into Christmas with Yule Tide. Odin is not a name to be referenced with the Bible. But here we go. We're going to bring Odin into Christmas, which is supposed to be a representation of the birth of Jesus Christ. And we have a pageant called a wild hunt. And how many times have you been invited to go to a church where on Christmas morning or Christmas Eve, the children will put on a little nativity scene for all to see? Pageant. That little Christmas nativity scene comes from the Yule Tide. It's supposed to be about Olden. Old Norse name. I'm going to spell these. J-O-L-N-I-R. Which means Yule figure. L-E-N-G-B-A-R-O-R. -R. Long beard. These are names of Olden that you can find and look up. 
He's, he's a man that has several names. He's an imitation of Jesus Christ, the bread of life, the water of life, the Son of God, the beloved of God, my Savior, the Bride, the King, the Lord of Lords. Jesus has many names and titles, so does Orden. So he'd be a perfect worldly representation of Jesus Christ, an antichrist, may I say. Keep going. A-L-D-A-F-E-O-R. Father of men. A-L-F-O-O-R. Capital L. Father of all. Father Christmas. List from A to Y on names and meanings of old and you can do a search. On your own internet. There are names from A from the letter A to Y. There's no Z. So Father Christmas, Santa Claus, Saint Nick, Saint Nicholas, just like Olden, has many names. All a carbon copy of Jesus Christ. Theorize of Saint Nicholas and Olden. They both have long white beard. Shall we see Jesus Christ with a white beard? Shall we just call it quits? Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, his wheels burning fire. Revelation 1, 14. His head and his hairs were white, were, were, uh, his hairs were white, can't say that together. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. The image we're going to see of St. Nicholas in Olden now is a copy from Daniel 7 and Revelation chapter 1. Olden and Nicholas are a Santa Claus, are a Antichrist of Jesus Christ. Horse, S-L-E-I-P-H-I-R, traded for reindeer in North America. So we took Olden's horse and we gave Santa Claus reindeer from North America. Olden rolled in the sky at night during the wild hunt. That's his story. Both, uh, both are said to be from the north. Jesus Christ is from the northest. The throne of God. The church age is called the ninth. The sunrise is the second advent of Jesus Christ. Well, we got more. Margaret Baker. B-A-K-E-R. The appearance of Santa Claus or Father Christmas which day is 25th of December, owes much to Olden, the old blue hooded, clothed, white beard, gift giving of the North in his eight foot steed, S-L-E-I-P-H-I-R. According to Margaret Baker, who seems to be authority on this subject, has said that you have stolen Santa Claus from Odin. And the story of Odin has been stolen out of the Bible of Jesus Christ. Thou, thief, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. 2007-1962, Discovery Christmas Customs and Folklore, A Guide to Seasonal Rights Throughout the World, page 62, Osprey Publishing. That is Margaret Baker's quote from her book. Helpers. Now, in 2016 of July, you got to be very careful now. I am not prejudiced. I am reading from a, from 
facts and figures that have been written in books and I've got the end of this book I'm gonna put it on our web page and you can get a copy of this okay I gotta put this disclaimer today this is written about Santa Claus helpers Z W A R T E P I E T or black Peter these are the helpers of Odin tall and scrawny with a dark beard and hair black Peter was accompanied with the punishing side of Christmas traditionally Saint Nicholas would hand out presents to good children while it fell to black Peter to dole out coal and sometimes knock on the head to children who misbehave so have you ever heard a child I have if you're not a good boy for Christmas you're going to get a lump of coal well according to the the study in the history Santa never gave the coal black Peter did I'm just quoting you the facts here that are said to be facts black Peter or a Z W A R T E P I E T in Dutch began in Holland in the 15th century oh, so it's not that old his dark let me quote first Thessalonians 5 5 ye are all the children of light and the children of day we are not of the night nor of darkness dark black his dark presence is supposed to suggest a Spaniard I would be upset if I was a Spaniard a reflection of Spain's occupation of the Netherlands at that time Black Peter was also related with pirates Saint Nick was the patron saint of shipmen a common threat to naughty now let me read Jeremiah 24 2 for 3 about naughty one basket had very good figs even like the figs that were first right the other basket had very naughty figs which could not be eaten they were so bad then said the Lord to me what seest thou Jeremiah I said figs very good figs very good and the evil the very evil according to Jeremiah 24 naughty means evil evil means naughty in the Bible Proverbs 15 3 the eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good so Santa Claus and his black Peter have taken the position of God to know who's good and who's who's evil How's that? Isn't it? He know what is it? The, the, he's making a list, checking right. He knows who's been naughty or nice. Proverbs fifteen three. That's God, Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, where were we? Dutch children was Dutch children that was that he would. Oh boy, that's not. Well, the Dutch children he would take them to pirates hide out and beat them the the naughty the evil children bring you to a pirate so you, he, they can this is a fact that you want your Christian children to be raised up in it's against the law to beat other children that are not yours but this black Peter will bring your naughty evil child to a pirate to be beaten how many times did that really happen did this black Peter take children to pirates is it a true fact or is it a story Proverbs 10 13 in the lips of him that has understanding wisdom is found but a rod is for the back of him that's void of understanding Proverbs 13 24 he that spareth a rod hateth his son but he that loveth him chasteneth be time and I'll leave Proverbs 14 3 Proverbs 22 8 
Proverbs 22, 15, Proverbs 23, 13, Proverbs 23, 14, Proverbs 29, 15 about chastising your child and no one else's. Now there's a large bag, John 12, 6. This is he says not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was upon therein. That's Judas. Judas carried the bag of Jesus Christ. But the large bag that he held was rumored, rumored, rumored. Baptist women tell rumors, gossip, to be used for stuffing children in for the trip back to Spain. What kind of mess is this stuff that you're getting involved in? Stuffing kitties into a bag? At the time, Black Peter was cinnamon, cinnamon for the devil. Ooh, now that'd be a racist statement. I'm not saying that. I'm just reading to you what they wrote about this guy. So if Black Peter, the black, the bad guy, steals children for them to be punished and puts them in bags, is the devil, or equal to the devil, and it was thought that St. Nicholas being a representative of God. There we go. It's down in print. Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, is supposed to be God Almighty. You got that? And in my Bible, that's called blasphemy. That's called an antichrist. Christian, if you've not got rid of Santa Claus out of your house, you keep going. You are a partaker of these evil deeds. So he's being a representative of God, yea, as an imitation or as an antichrist, had beaten the devil. St. Nicholas has beaten the devil. No man, St. Nicholas is a man, can beat Satan, only God. Even Michael in Jude 1 9, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him railing accusations, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Job 41 8, lay thy hand upon him, remember the battle, and do no more. So when you make a statement that Saint Nicholas has beaten the devil, that no man can do. Satan has had 6,000 years experience of all men and women, all races, all creeds. So to say that St. Nicholas has beaten Satan, you are making St. Nicholas equal with God the Father. Don't tell me I'm not lying about this. Don't tell me I'm, I'm, I'm a fool for calling Santa Claus the Antichrist. Now it's coming out of their own mouths, their own studies. And made him his servant. Saint Nicholas has made Satan to be his servant, called a Black Peter. Thus it fell to Black Peter to hand out chastisements. Chastisements. While Saint Nicholas dwelt with the more pleasant side of Christmas. That's a mess. In parts of Central Europe like Austria, Germany, and Switzerland, the character of Black Peter was a more like a monster with horns. Revelation 17, 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Also has long hair, Revelation 9, 8. And they had hair as the hair of a woman, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and a red tongue. He was known by a variety of names, K-L-A-U-B-A-U-L, K-R-A-M-P-U-S, G-R-A-M-P-U-S, B-A-R-T-E-L. St. Nicholas sent naughty children to him to be beaten. St. Nicholas violates the scriptures. 
You have no right to arrest me if I punish my child. But you have all right to arrest me if I try, if I try to punish someone else's child. St. Nicholas will hand, hand over your evil children to Black Peter. You never heard of Black Peter. Where did Black, Black, yeah, Black Peter go? Oh, we can't have that because, because the black people have come out. They've got freedom now. Yeah, like the Mormon teach how they used to teach about black people. Like the Jehovah Witnesses had taught about black people. Have you not gone and looked at what they used to say about black people? What about, um, oh, what's that guy? Darwin. Those teachings, this teaching of black people are gone because now the black people got rights. And we can't offend nobody. And this is the patriot this is the patriot saint of children, we mind you. The Dutch continued to stage elaborate arrivals of Santa Claus and Black Peter. In weeks before the feast, Santa and Black Peter would ride by boat. In Matthew 9, 1 through 2, and Mark 5, 1 through 6, I'll leave you about Jesus arriving on a boat. Jesus came by boat in the Bible supposedly from Spain and greeted by every swelling masses of eager children and adults mark 5 21 and when Jesus had passed over again by sheep on the other side much people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea another story stolen out of the Bible and removed the name of Jesus Christ and placed Santa Claus in its place. You are reading the Bible of Santa Claus. Uh oh. Carrying a book of Saint Nicholas. Exodus 32, 33, and the Lord said to Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Psalms 69, 28, Let them be blotted out of the book of living, and not be written with the righteous. Daniel 12, 1, Then that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as was never since there was a nation ever to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Luke 10, 20, Notwithstand, in this rejoice not that your spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice, re but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Philippians 4, 3, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Hebrews 12, 23. In the general assembly in the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Revelation 3, 5. He that overcomes shall, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not block out his name on the book of life. Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of lambs of life. Revelation 17, 8. Revelation 20 verse 12, Revelation 21 27, Revelation 22 19. Black Peter does hold the book of the Antichrist. Jesus Christ holds the book of God. Satan and Black Peter are Antichrist. They imitate everything Jesus Christ is and does. And Christians of the world love it so. God has a book of names written in it. Santa Claus and Black Peter also have names. And it records if they're good or evil. God is recording your sins. 17th century Protestants. The Christ child date is moved from December 6th to the, to the 25th. 
The Christ child date has been moved from December 6th to the 25th. December 6th was the death of St. Nicholas. The old product under a new label, but has the same ingredients. The rabbit is a rabbit, whether it's white, black, or brown. It's a rabbit. Catholic bookstores, gift shops, shrines have quickly accepted the output of the kneeling Santa in many forms. Figurines, cards, nativity sets, and books. Santa in the Christ Child by Nicholas Bakewell, which tells the story of how an incarnation of the Christ Child at the age of 10 saves Christmas by helping an injured Santa and the elves deliver all the toys to good little boys and girls. Barf! Puke! Dirty diaper! i like to have book, chapter, and verse, please, on that. Jesus Christ, at 10 years old, helped Santa deliver presents. Fable. Lie. The child then takes Santa to original nativity scene and the little boy's birthplace, whereupon Santa Claus falls to his knees in respect. Just respect? Can I have a book, chapter, verse, or was it cash, check, or plastic? P.T. Barham said there are suckers born every minute, and most are Christians who ought to know better. In downtown Toronto, when a after, uh, downtown Toronto, when after a communion, the priest celebrant, known for his informal style, engaged the children in conversation. He asked, does anyone know who is coming soon? Oh, I know the answer to that question. That's my life verse. The, expe the expected answer should have been baby Jesus in light of the setting. It's Christmas. It's the nativity saying, we ought to want to see Jesus. However, the answer was Santa. How many Bible Baptist churches, if I were to go up to December 23rd and go up to the children and say, Hey, who's coming? What would be the answer? In Toronto, it was Santa. The priest continued to, continued to leave the altar, instructing the congregation to continue singing carols. And after a short absence, he reappeared dressed as Santa Claus. I guess he had a script. He pretended to be somebody who he wasn't. And he addressed for the occasion. He gave the children exactly what they wanted. They didn't want Jesus. They wanted Santa. So the guy is a, a, a whatever religion junk that he's hello came in as Satan, Santa. Of course, the children were excited, and the parents were so thrilled that their children could enjoy their moment with Santa. It is no wonder why so many young Americans have, as so many adults, I can say American, have abandoned the church. Revelation 11.10 And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. There's a Christmas in the tribulation after two of God's saints had been killed. Publicized by Martin Luther, explicitly to discourage the figure of St. Nicholas, at the Protestant Reformation in 16th and 17th century Europe, many Protestants changed the gift bearer to the Christ child, or Christ kind of, C H R I S T K I N D L. We where we talked about that, and the date of giving gifts changed from December 6th 
to Christmas Eve. The Protestants brought Santa come, coming on Christmas Eve for you to wake up Christmas Day and find presents. That is a fruit of the Protestant churches. A gift bringer familiar to the children in Central Europe, the Christ kind, bears little likeness to the infant of Bethlehem. The Christ kind has adopted in Catholic areas during the 19th century while it began to be gradually replaced by a more and less secularized version of St. Nicholas. The W-E-I-H-N-A-C-H-T-S-M-A-N-N, -N -N, Father Christmas, Santa Claus, and Protestant religions. Just another name. A mouse is a mouse no matter what the new name you give it. You cannot just change the name or image and be set well it is no more sin. Yes, it is sin. Today, they call fornication shacking up. They call adultery a fair. They call uh, a fable or a story. That's a lie. He's got substance of you. No. He's involved in sin. Living together again is fornication as having an affair. It's still adultery. That's what they call it. You cannot lighten the load of sin. You see, if we address it as sin, only God the Son, Jesus Christ, can heal us. Call it by another name. And we think a man, a doctor, a man of religion, a man can solve our problems. Remember the man told devil, conquer the devil, and the man said, you know, you're going to come and, and discipline the bad children, Santa Claus? The problem is still the name sin. The Christ kind is a spirit-like child, usually depicted with blonde hair and angelic wings. Martin Luther proposed it to be a reference to the incarnation of Jesus as an infant. Sometimes the Christ child is, instead of the infant child, interpreted as a specific angel bringing presents as it appears in some processions together with an image of the little Jesus Christ. I just want to see how far we can go here. We've got all kinds. We're not done. Just want to see because it was at the sake of time. Um, there are. I think we're gonna. I'm gonna mark right here. We'll stop right here when we come into it. This is all one thing, and it's hard. I don't want to stop in the middle, but for the sake of time, there are no blondes in the Bible. Not a one. The closest one that comes is yellow hair. There are three matches of yellow hair. And they are the reference to leprosy. Leviticus 13.30. Leviticus 13.32. Leviticus 13.36. I'm going to leave these for you to look them up. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word. I'm going to leave up to you to do a little searching too. I'm going to leave up to you to open your Bible and check these verses out. If you really care. Where do you find angels with wings? Only in the Roman Catholic Church. There are no angels in the Bible with wings. Cherubim and cherubim have wings, but they're never angels. There are as men. And take on the shape of human men, the angels. They are some beings with wings. But let's take a look and see what these winged beings are in the Bible. Let's look at the Bible and see what it is. Zechariah 5, 5 through 11. The angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see, what is this that goeth forth? And I said, What is it? He said, This is an ephah. 
that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance throughout all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephod. And he said, This is wickedness. And he cast it in the midst of the ephod. And he cast the weight of the lead upon the mouth thereof. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women. And the wind was in their wings. For they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephod between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephod? And he said unto me, To build it and house in the land of Shinar it shall be established and set there upon her own base now let's look at it again the key words women wickedness wing stork Shinar which is Babylon have you studied Babylon in her religion Catholic Church comes much from the Babylonian religion. Check out Babylon in the book of Revelation. It's a reference to the Roman Catholic Church. Stork wings? Isn't it supposed to be storks bring babies? There is nothing biblical, biblical about a damnable heresy of Santa Claus. Okay. And that's what exactly what this, this mess is. It's heresy. This Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas, Christ kind, Protestant, Episcopal, Catholic, scientific, evolution. This guy is a mess. And this guy is in a lot of born-again Bible-believing homes. And their children would rather see Santa than Jesus Christ. And the true story in Toronto proved it.